After two decades in the CAD industry, I want to provide some lessons learned and some guidance on choosing or changing your CAD tool. Before you consider changing your CAD tool, ask yourself, have you done everything that you can to achieve success in your current tool? Have you invested in training? Do you have adequate infrastructure in terms of support and the people to administer your tools? And have you developed processes? If you haven't developed good design processes, good analysis processes, good data management processes, take a look at those things first. A little bit of investment in time and money in those areas can very often eliminate the need to change your CAD tool. The biggest mistake I find that companies make when either choosing or changing their CAD tool is that they make it an emotional decision. Now, I've worked for companies that pride themselves on being data-driven, yet still make emotional decisions when coming to the choice of their CAD or PLM tools. Often it's because, hey, the project is falling behind, we're not meeting our objectives, let's blame the CAD tool or people will choose a particular tool based on a gut decision. I just feel like this one tool is the thing that will rescue us. Or people will gravitate to their first home. Hey, what did I learn in college? What did I learn at my first company? Hey, let's use that tool because that's the one that's most familiar to me. Those are not good reasons to choose a CAD tool. I had a former boss at PTC who told us all the time that customer success occurs when results exceed expectations. And when you're changing or choosing your CAD tool, a lot of times people think that, hey, we make this change, all of a sudden it's going to be all rainbows and unicorns. And it's never that way. There is something in organizational change management called the J-curve. Whenever you make a change, you're always going to have a period of disruption. You're always going to have a severe dip in productivity, and you've got to take that into account. Again, a lot of people think that things will be great. All we have to do is change our tool, and you have what's called the valley of despair. Prepare yourself for it. I obviously have a preference in CAD tools. Hey, I like Creo Parametric, and a lot of people ask me, hey Dave, what is the best CAD package? And I tell people that there isn't really a best CAD package. What you wanna do is find the package that is right for you. So let's take a look at three steps that you should perform when choosing or changing your CAD tool. First, you want to perform a benchmark, and I mean a real benchmark. The benchmark should be broken down into two main areas. First, you have the technical benchmark. What you want to do is list all the different criteria that you have in terms of functionality of the software. So for example, that includes your part modeling, your assembly modeling, how you want to do drawings or model-based definition, if you're using routed systems like cabling or piping, simulation, analysis, manufacturing, List all the major functions that you want your new CAD tool to perform and then assign a weighting to the importance of those different functions. So for example, you might have a stronger need for top-down design than surfacing, so you want to assign the appropriate weighting to those different areas. Also, you want to evaluate some non-numeric quality. So for example, what's the user interface like? Do people like it? What's the user experience like? And most importantly, when you're performing this technical benchmark, you want your users to get hands on the software. You want some real testing. The second part of the benchmark is the business side. So you'll obviously want to consider your cost. Are your licenses going to be on a subscription or are you on perpetual licenses with annual maintenance? Also, take a look at the cost at year five. Don't just look at the year one cost because oftentimes you will be offered a huge discount in order for that company to get your business. Hey, you wanna know what is your actual cost going to be once those big discounts run out. Second, startup services. When you are implementing a new CAD tool, you're going to need someone to set up your templates and all your different standards if you don't have someone who can do that for you. You're going to need training, and this will be your initial training for your end users, but then you're going to need additional training later on once your users need to use more advanced functionality. 
Also, you want to make sure that you have access to an online on-demand system. So make sure that you get the necessary subscription for that. Support. Are you going to have internal support or are you going to need to hire some service to provide your technical support for you? Do you have internal subject matter experts? If not, how are you going to develop them? And you're going to want to consider the time of implementation and how that's going to affect your business. The biggest piece of advice that I can give about the business benchmark is that the quotes that you get, those are the floor, that's not the ceiling. Make sure that you define the criteria for the benchmark before you start evaluating CAD software and then make sure that you stick to it. One thing I see a lot of companies do is that they move the goalposts so that they end up selecting the CAD package that they want based on emotions. The second part of choosing your CAD package is making sure that you have the right fit. Do you have the right fit for your users and for your product? So you're going to want to make an honest assessment of the actual skill level and aptitude of the people using the software. Also, do you have a culture of curiosity? If you're using a more advanced CAD package, do you have users who will actually end up training themselves so that they know how to use that software? Next, you want to take a look at your product. Some products don't require a high-end CAD package. I've had that situation where I was dealing with a company, they were making furniture, and they really didn't need all the power of Creo Parametric, so I actually recommended a different product to them. Third, you want to choose the CAD package that's right for your company's infrastructure. So some things that you want to consider are, what kind of executive support do you have for this tool? Do you have dedicated administrators? How are you going to be performing data management? And what are you going to establish in terms of training and continuous learning? So again, don't think of this in terms of picking the quote unquote best CAD system. You want to pick the CAD system that's best for your organization and for the products that you make. And now for a couple of bonus tips. Hey, make sure that when you are picking a CAD system that this is a two-way door. If you find out that you ended up making the wrong decision, make sure that you can make a change later on. Don't get locked into a single CAD package. And also, someone recommended this to me and it really stuck. Don't let your CAD users pick your PLM tool. CAD users will think in terms of product data management, not product lifecycle management. So make sure that the creators and consumers of product lifecycle management data are the ones who are going to be picking your PLM tool. Third tip, recognize that in today's product development world, you're probably going to be multi-CAD. That's another reason why I say that it's time for the CAD wars to end. Thank you very much, and I hope this helps you and your organization.